Okay, so uh, good afternoon, colleagues and students. So welcome to today's webinar. So we really have since we have quite a lot of things to discuss. So we will likely we'll kick start now. So um, first of all, thanks for joining for today's uh, webinar. Uh, we will talk about the innovation and support on virtual instruction. We pick a sample case for discussions. Uh, we will provide recordings uh, later on. So uh, feel free to share this slide back. Uh, uh, as well as the recordings to the colleagues if uh, they are interested. So you can again can click this link and you can have all the materials here because we also include some extra links uh, or embed on the slide there. So you can actually click those things to check later on. Okay, and uh, thanks Cindy. So we post the uh, link again. So uh, the, uh, the several links are slide there, recordings, uh, evaluation forms and call for paper at the end. Uh, again, we would like to introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Leon, and also with my colleague Cindy, Lin, and Marie. So all of us are from Technology and Rich Plan Initiative, a team to support uh, colleagues, uh, teachers, and faculties to develop e-learning and multimedia materials. So we would like to take a few cases to discuss today. Uh, if you remember last year, so um, we actually uh, have a webinar on this project, so the scheme. So instructional design as, as, uh, extension assistant. So uh, to work with all of you, so work with all teachers to go develop materials together. Uh, because we uh, observe that not all teachers are experienced on uh, e-learning development. Some of you may be very new to, uh, to this Hong Kong U to e-learning development. So instead of just providing consultation, why don't we uh, work with you together to de develop materials? So uh, in the project is funded by uh, UTC ETL project. We recruit uh, fresh graduate, uh, current students, and uh, partner with colleagues and teachers uh, together to develop the content. Um, so we run this scheme for one year already. So the target is we want to support 20 courses within two years. And um, right now in the first year, we actually already support 16 courses uh, spread from different faculties from architecture, arts, education, medicine, engineering, science, social science, et cetera. Uh, and uh, we, have, we also support some um, uh, atypical or uh, not common units. Uh, for example, graduate school, common core office, and uh, with a cross unit projects also. So we actually try our best to reach to as many faculties as possible and as many teachers as possible. We support 60 course uh, within the first year. And uh, we provide, uh, we work with them on various things, uh, assessment, continuous assessment, high assessment, sport development, uh, collaborative learning, uh, learning text, et cetera, et cetera. So we try so many things. Some of them is uh, we have a good experience. So we would like to have a showcase today. Some of them are not that successful. We learn from the experience and we hope to support uh, teachers better in the coming year. Uh, we also, run uh, workshops. So uh, uh, last year we run 12 workshops. So uh, covering Tantasia, Miro, and Lotion. Uh, we don't expect, we didn't expect to run so many workshops, but because we keep receiving emails uh, from students, some students, from staff, from teachers, uh, uh, during meetings where they talk to us, et cetera. So we keep extending and running more and more workshops. So at the end, we run 12 to uh, workshops at the end. So we will still run those the two workshops uh, in the coming academic year. And another thing that I think is more interest is actually is provide uh, supporting or uh, freshman orientation. So this is something new. Uh, we actually pa partner with uh, different units on uh, producing some short videos. So for example, this one is we partner with academic advising office to produce videos that uh, new students knowing what they can do in year one to year four, and talk about uh, minor, major selections, et cetera. So they are more prepared, students are more prepared for their academic journey and life, uh, campus life, and they are more prepared and they, they can have a better learning experience. And we also partner with uh, Equal Opportunity Unit to produce videos. So when students get on board, they know more about uh, uh, Equal Opportunities, uh, knowing that there are the, some candles for, uh, uh, for uh, asking for equal opportunities or campaigns, channels, et cetera, et cetera. So we have, we, this is something I really interest to support freshmen for their orientation. 
And we today we will talk about uh, four cases. So uh, well, each of us will talk about uh, one case, uh, talking about learning text, talk about uh, uh, mirrors, so a corrective learning tools, notion, and connect X. Uh, although we are talking about four cases, but actually we talk uh, from different perspectives. Some of us will more on function, some of us will more on impact, some of us will be more on the co-development uh, process, etc. So hope we can provide different experience or perspective on these uh, developments. So again, I hope actually through today's webinar, you have more experience, uh, you know what we are doing. We hope we can inspire you to think of something new and then to talk to us and then we work together uh, in the next academic year. Um, of course, besides the thing that we try, we also encourage uh, you to talk to us about your needs. If you are interested to work on assessment for digital learning, uh, feel free to talk to us. We find our way to, <coughs> to see if we can uh, design a good solution for you together. And in particular, if you want to ask students to try some video production, animation production, uh, podcast, etc., or doing some more on testing, and, and, and other things using online tools or uh, LMS, so please let us know. Uh, we happy to help you. So the first part will be from me. I will talk about uh, learning ethics, uh, in particular is on SDG or sustainable education. So this is the project we work with a common core office. Um, so, uh, and it's an it's a educational data mining project. Okay, so if uh, not, I'm not sure well whether all of you notice this uh, figure. See, actually, it's the United States, United and United not United States, United Nations. Yes, United Nations. Uh, they established these seventeen goals. Uh, ten years ago, so uh, or several years ago. So uh, on targeting for two or three or uh, uh, all of us, the uh, human can achieve these seventeen seventeen uh, goals. So uh, covering in lots of things, so including the health and well-being, including peace, etc. Uh, we believe uh, all these goals are very important. So even up, up to now, all of us agree these are all important goals. And then if you uh, check the documents carefully, uh, actually in uh, SDG number four, quality education, uh, there is an indicator showing indicating we need to help students to know more about SDGs, uh, know and be a global citizen. So that's why uh, that's why uh, we want to think about whether we can support it. So let more students know more about SDGs. And what we want to do is uh, for us, we want to know whether uh, how have SDGs been currently taught in Common Core courses from a course curriculum and film cluster perspective. So this is something uh, we want to try uh, through. Uh, of course, for uh, we can ask. Uh, human or, or some experts to do this testing. So uh, read the syllabus and then come and then check and then map with different SDGs, etc. But the problem is it takes time and there are not too many, uh, not many experts on doing this kind of classifications. So uh, in Hong Kong, we are so fortunate we have uh, Dr. Vinci Chen in common core office to do the work. Uh, but uh, if we want to scale to more courses, this is something we need machine learning to do. So that's why. Uh, we go for the design. And uh, uh, actually, if you notice, actually in uh, uh, UCL, so they actually start, they already uh, classified 6,000 uh, modules already. Six, I believe they're talking about courses. They have already classified uh, six, more than 6,000 courses through keyword matching last year. Uh, so uh, we also noticed uh, there are some committees called OSDG. They uh, try to create database uh, from the United Nations documents to the tagging, etc. So they have a lot of documents already tagged. So that's why uh, what we want to do is uh, why don't we use this uh, existing database and then try to do a uh, machine learning, something beyond keyword matching. So doing machine learning to classify uh, common core courses. And that's why we work with uh, CC Office together. We obtain uh, 166 course syllabus. And we also obtain uh, proposals for, of new courses. Uh, I, I remember there will be around 10 to 15 new courses next year. So we also gather all the proposals. We extract useful, useful information from those syllabus and proposals. And then uh, 
including overview, written needs, weekly topics, etc., for the classification. Uh, we exclude some of the materials, for example, outcome and assessment, because those, they have some keywords that it will be easily mistrigger uh, the uh, SDG number four, which is the quality education. So we move some of the contents, we include something that we are we believe is important and use it for classification. Um, I will skip the technical details. I will just want to show some results here. Uh, here shows the first uh, two, uh, two examples. This is actually CCS T916. If you check the syllabus, it's actually about energy. And you can see this course is purely about energy. And you can see uh, all the materials on, uh, actually belong, uh, are talking about SDG7, and you can see here. So if you go to check SDG7, it's actually also about energy. So that means the algorithm itself correctly classified uh, this course. So uh, yes, it's about energy. So with a, a full machine learning. And you can see this is another extreme. This is another example from uh, humanities. So this is the uh, CCHU906. Uh, you can see there, the course actually cover everything. Um, you can see uh, from SDG1 to 15, we skip 16 and 17 in the machine learning. Uh, we have some technical issues, but uh, you can see in this course, actually it covers everything. And I work with Wincy uh, later on to check the result and she said it's true because this course actually covers all the, all the content. So, so that means uh, this is also a correct presentation. So based on human qualification and machine learning based, uh, machine learning qualification, this course is actually covers everything. So that's why we, we have, we, we, we believe uh, our classification has some uh, uh, good uh, satisfactory results. And that's why we try to map uh, to courses. And we try to use some criteria to uh, classify those tests. So, uh, and for example, a course, there will be some courses taking just one SDG. There may be several courses, there will be courses that are matching uh, two or three SDGs at the same time. Because this is a disciplinary course, right? And we have uh, several courses actually have to map to four SDGs at the same time. Okay, so this is the grant. And then we try to, after the classifications, after mapping uh, uh, courses with SDGs, and we try to drop them together to have a note. And you can see the result. Uh, we try to classify them according to four areas, that four AOIs. So Chinese, uh, global studies, uh, humanities, and uh, science and technology. And you can observe the results here. Uh, we have some SDGs haven't been covered too much. So 6, 14, and 15, uh, 15, uh, yes, et cetera. And we have some uh, three AOIs that actually have a strong focus. For example, uh, uh, CCST will cover the uh, SDG 9. And if you check, it's actually about innovation. So that means a correct mapping. And if you go to uh, China studies, so China, AOI, so SDG 11 will be on cities and communities. So also true, if you go to check the syllabus, it's also most of the Chinese, uh, China AOI courses are about uh, the communities and cities. And if you go to humanities, so that's the uh, SDG number three. So it will be uh, well be uh, good health and well being. So it's also correct because humanities they are all, most of the time talking about well being. So we believe in the overall perspective, uh, from overall perspective, the qualification is uh, quite okay. Of course, there are some issues. For example, there are some misqualifications, uh, etc. So we observe those patterns because of, uh, we are trying to improve right now. So. Uh, but I would like to show some preliminary results here. Uh, we try to, after classifications, we try to get in depth to see uh, the distributions or the things, et cetera. And here shows the uh, issue is the China AOI. And uh, the graph is actually based on some custom approach. And we, what I want to show the results is actually, there are three courses that is quite different from other courses. So as I mentioned before, uh, most courses are talking about cities and communities. Uh, those AOIs, are, uh, those costs are talking about these. And we have three cases. One of them I would like to point out here is on Chinese medicine. So you can see uh, Chinese medicine is quite different from discussions in uh, talking about communities and cities in China, right? So they show actually the diversity and also variability or diversity of causes. And for me, I think it's good because it's talking about uh, AOI is not focusing on just one single issues, it actually provides a spectrum, a diversity of contents related to China. This is something that uh, we, want to, we want to know and we want to uh, 
persuade, uh, uh, encourage teachers to do something more. So you can see this course, this is one of the examples. So uh, yes, courses that actually are quite different from others, uh, which is uh, uh, my opinion is good. And here shows uh, another graph. So talk, talking about SDG occurrence, it's talking about when a course teach a certain SDG, will this course teach another SDG also? So here shows the result. So you can see if they are talking about SDG three, most of them, they will also talk about SDG nine. Uh, sometimes they will talk about 11 and X together. You can see from the, based on the thickness of the, uh, of the nines, et cetera. And here shows the relationships between SDGs. Uh, some of them maybe have a weak connection with each other. Some of them have strong connection with each other. You can see from nine, because it's, it's about innovation. So it's, it's easy to be connected to other things too. Uh, so based on some results, we want to do something more, but we start to do some clustering. So for example, uh, if you remember in Hong Kong, you uh, students have to take four courses, uh, each from uh, one courses from each AOI. So, and then in my perspective, I was a student, if I want to know uh, SDG number three more, so can I take a course from each AOI that all are talking about SDG three? And we, we try to do this kind of uh, classifications and find out whether it's, it's, it's possible. And here shows uh, one of the examples. So SDG3, health and well-being. And we found uh, for each AOI, they are co a course talking about these areas. So uh, journey to madness, health literacy, uh, suicide, and Chinese medicine. So if students want to know this, uh, go to this SDG in depth, they actually have a possibility. This is an, an example. We have some other examples also. We, we, we less the content a little bit, we, instead of going for every AOI, we take a course, we, we relax the uh, requirement a little bit, we have something interesting. For example, uh, for example, we are talking about uh, five clusters. There, there are several courses actually talk, covering the same set of SDGs. So for example, there are courses covering both uh, three and nine. So I frame it as a technology for well-being. We have courses talking about uh, nine and 11, that means uh, infrastructure for sustainable uh, city, et cetera. And we have different combinations based on the clustering. And here shows some examples. And I, for me, I, I'm, I'm the one to further in, interpret so the meaning of uh, the combination. So here shows some results. Uh, here shows five clusters and we can show have different interesting patterns and clusters actually for the uh, calculation. And so, so today we just uh, in this project we just want to go for some brief overview. Uh, what we are doing right now is uh, we are collecting feedback from uh, teachers. So we actually have all the 160 and new course time or that means uh, 170 or 180 courses, all the qualifications ready. We actually send the results to 20 teachers right now, collect and feedback. Uh, maybe two weeks later, two weeks later we will send to the rest of the 160 teachers and collect the feedback to see whether our results are accurate or not, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And we want to see if uh, it really worthwhile to scale to uh, mapping more courses. And of course, we need to improve the accuracy. We have just by human observation, we see there are some issues and we are trying our best to improve it. And we want to classify more courses. Right now, we just cover common core courses. It's because uh, most of these courses is talking about SDGs uh, most of the time. And uh, we want to scale to more courses, whether maybe some curriculum focus more on SDGs or some faculties that have lots of courses covering SDGs. And we want to go to classify more courses. And we want to, so we are also working, seeking, uh, we, are, we are trying to working with uh, some other universities together to classify the courses also. So this is our future work uh, on the learning ethics. So maybe let me pass uh, the mic to uh, Ni to talk about the mural. So let me stop sharing first and Ni can switch on the sharing again. So if you have any questions, feel free to write in the chat room. Uh, we can discuss more during uh, at the end of the uh, workshop uh, of, of the family.
Okay, um, thank you, Leon. And the second part of today's session, I'm going to talk about some online collaborative group learning activities facilitated by Miro. And I will focus more on what sort of exercise we can do and what sort of outcomes we can achieve through Miro. And the purpose of using Miro is that we want to make online learning experiences more collaborative, interactive, and fun for students. And to make online learning progress trackable, manageable, and shareable in both synchronous and asynchronous contexts for both teachers and students. And to allow students to learn from each other and refer back to the at class activities after class. And then finally, allow teachers to review and give feedback collectively uh, within the class and outside the classroom. I'm going to share the link of the case two Miro, uh, Miro board in the chat so that you can take a look when I'm going through the cases. The first case I have done was with the graduate school summer program about uh, best research practices. It was a face-to-face -face class with around 40 RPG students. The learning activities were scenario-based and group-based, and it is a one of two hour session. The screen capture here is the overview of the mirror board I have designed. The learning objectives of this program is to help our students understand the definition of three research issues, authorship, mentorship, and data integrity, and to evaluate real life situation related to these three issues. The learning activities in this session include one warm up story and three real life scenarios in which students need to make their own decisions. And through the group discussion, students need to rationale their decision. And to help students to understand different perspectives uh, within their group discussion, we have facilitated the group rotation, uh, which means in each activity, students will have different group mates um, so that they will have more diverse perspective uh, from their classmates. And at the end of each activity, we will have pre sharing and the teacher will give feedback and help the students to reflect. So here is a warm up activity. The rundown for each activity is basically the same. The students need to read the story, think about the question, and to make the decision either years or no. So in the warm up activity, the case is about if you drop your phone in the MTR track, whether you will get down to pick it up or not. So students need to make a yes or no decision. And then on the left hand side, you can see their name tag. Students need to pick their name tag and drag it into the rationale panel. You can see two columns here. One is yes panel and one is no panel. So they put their name tag in the panel and they will be able to find the classmates whose name tag is in the same uh, group rationale panel with them. And they need to find them, they discuss and rationale their decision within uh, their group. And they need to type in the result of the group's discussion in the panel. And then the teacher will review the answer and probably ask some students to share their rationale and then give the teacher some feedback. So here, this uh, screen capture is the design of the first scenario about authorship. You can see on the left hand side is the scenario story. We have two characters. One is the PhD student called Chris. One is her supervisor, Joni. And after reading the scenario story, student needs to, um, uh, there is a research issue related question. It is about uh, Chris is going to submit the paper to a top journal whether she should include her, uh, her PhD supervisor, Joni, as the first author. And then students need to uh, make the decision in the decision-making uh, uh, panel, and there's a branch here. Then students need to find their name tag and drag the name tag into either yes or no, the rationale panel. And in the class, uh, we can see this is screen capture here. We can see like the real time cut, uh, students real time cursor location in the mirror board, so that the teacher will be able to know which part of uh, the content the student is actually focusing on in this mirror board. And uh, this is the group rotation. Students are looking for their classmates, the group discussion. And uh, in order to better manage the time, uh, we set up the timer, which is the building timer in Miro, and students will be able to know how much time they have left for each activities so that uh, we will better to manage the pace. And this is the result of student discussion and the answer they have written down in their group panel, and we can see the name tag uh, in each group panel. And based on this, the teacher will give her home feedback. So in this case, I'm, I'm reflecting like what could, what could we have done better 
The first one is we could have given a brief introduction about the key functions of Miro to get students familiar with pl this platform at the beginning of the course, even though we send out those video guides about Miro before the start of the class. But it's still very useful to uh, go through the key functions for the students to know, uh, to give students more confidence that what they are going to do in this class to reassure the students, like to make them feel more definite um, about uh, the following activities in this class. And for the case scenario, it will be good to avoid the gender stereotype insensitive topics uh, to um, make, uh, to use the neutral gender character to avoid making like, um, to make the gender too explicit, like uh, to, to avoid like which role must be a which uh, gender. So like in these sensitivity topics, it would be better to avoid gender stereotype. And last one is, Good to maintain the balance between group rotation and the depth of discussion. So in this case, it would be good for students to have different group mates so that they can have diverse perspectives, but it also somewhat limits the depth of discussion because students, they need to constantly uh, restart the discussion in each round. So they start from the beginning of the discussion. So that somewhat limit the depth of the discussion. So in this is the second case that I have done with uh, social work department about comprehensive assessment for psychogeriatric care. It was, uh, the first session was face-to-face, -face, but later on because of COVID, so the class has transferred to online. And this course has around 24 TPG students. Again, the learning activities are scenario based and group-based. And this course has six sessions throughout the semester and each session is about four hours. And the screen capture for the uh, mirror board design for this course. And we have been using the same mirror board for all the sessions. And we can see on the left hand side, we have included the mirror key function instruction in this mirror board so that, uh, and we went through this instruction in the first class. And in the later courses, the students can always go back to have a look if they need. And learning objective, basically in this course, the students needs to find out the right assessment, ask the same questions to the elderly to find out their situations and then provide the right assistance to them. And the learning activities in the session one include the grouping and video case discussions, two group exercise, uh, scenario story and the practice of inter assessment. And again, we have peer sharing, teachers will give feedback and help students reflect. And in all the exercise here, like students stay in one group and later on they will do the group project together. So here, the screen capture, we can see the grouping panel, the students name tag are here and then they need to drag their name tag into their group panel. After they find their group, uh, group mates, they watch the video together within their group. And then they need to discuss about the three questions based on the uh, elderly situation they found out from this video. So this exercise basically to get students have a basic understanding about, about the assessment of the elderly. And another exercise is the students need to identify different psycho, uh, psychogeriatric care assessments for different, uh, from different resources. As a social worker, it is very important for them to know uh, which assessments to use, and they need to find the right assessment from the credible resource. So, they, so in this exercise, each group is given one source. So group one, like Google Scholar, group two, Madeline. And we can see the text on the right hand side, there are different types of assessments, so students need to um, pick several of the texts and find the uh, corresponding assessment from the resource and then each every group will share their results share their findings in the mirror board and then talk uh, and then uh, all the classmates can find their uh, the answer from other groups. So another exciting exercise here is um, a scenario story and base, uh, and then it is a story about a real life cases about Miss Lan and students, based on this case, students need to practice the inter-right assessment uh, to assess Miss Lan's uh, Miss Lan's situations and suggest what sort of assistance that Miss Lan needs. And we can see um, this is the comic story and I've translated uh, 
from test-based story into this visually more uh, vivid uh, comics. So from this comics, the students can read, it, read through it more easily and students can know more about um, and the more details about the story backgrounds and um, it is like provide better visual experience for students. Uh, in another seminar, uh, we will run in the mid-May, we will talk more about how to use Pixton comics um, to support daily teaching and learning. Also, we will include that how to use Pixton as an assessment in the course. So after students have have go through this case and this is the interi board. So interi has several sessions. In each session, students will need to write down um, like what what sort of situation they have been found out about Miss Lam from this case study and what sort of questions they need to ask to to evaluate Miss Lam's uh, situations and what sort of challenges they have faced when they try to evaluate. Um, the character situation from this um, story. So at the end of each course, uh, the teacher will share the homework and extra resources in the mirror board so that students can refer to them to know more about these issues. Um, so in this mirror board, all the content resources are shared collectively and all the students' uh, works and the feedbacks and are all displayed in this mirror board so that students can always have an overview of the whole course and they know what other their classmates are doing and they can always go back to check the, the feedback they have received. So, so some simple reflection about case two, that mirror is a powerful tool to facilitate collaborative interactive activities, but we do need to remind students from time to time that they need to use laptop or tablet to browse this platform. And the warm activity is very useful to get students familiar with the operations on Miro. So um, to give students more confidence about uh, what is what they're going to do in the follow-ups, uh, following activities. And do pay attention to the setting of the mirror shareable link. In the course, like of course we want the visitors to be able to work on the board. So we need to turn on the edit, editing access. But after the course, when we are working on the contents of the following sessions, we may not want students to mess around. So this time, like we may turn off the editing, access, uh, editing access. Also, if, like you, you don't want to disclose the later on sessions content before the start of the class. You can use the height functions to cover uh, the the panels, the the contents of the following classes. So, and at the end, so if you have an interest in designing uh, the mirror board, uh, welcome to collaborate with us, and we're very happy to customize the design of the mirror exercise to fit in your class. And now I would like to pass the time to Cindy to talk about Notion. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Cindy. Now I will share um, how we use Notion as a hub and create integration. Um, before that, I would like to introduce a bit about the tool Notion. Um, Notion is a tool for um, note-taking, project management, or personal knowledge management, or even time management. So once we successfully log into Notion, then we can see the interface like this. Uh, to the left-hand side, there will be a sidebar, so we can add pages. Uh, we can see like quick fonts, all updates, and also use the templates provided by Notion. And the right hand side, this is the main part that we would do most of the editing. We can add content here, we can add test images, audio, video, or even upload files, and also up, uh, add sub pages into this page. Um, another feature is called block. So it's just like the Lego block. Um, we can use the slasher, we type slasher for commands. And then we can see the basic blocks that we can add test pages to do list or headings. And then um, when we scroll down, then we can see another one called database. So the database includes different views to present our content, which includes table, board, gallery, or list. If you want to know more about these pictures or how to use notions um, for your individual use or team uh, collaborations, you can check out the user guide to Notion for education. We have prepared some tests uh, descriptions and also tutorial video for you. 
Now let's talk about the project. So the project Digital Arboretum is in the Department of Landscape Architecture. It is a project co-developed by DLA, Tally, and Digital Literacy Lab of CAES. And this presentation will show you the design flow with Notion as a hub to build TNL resources and how Tally helps to connect and integrate digital content into Notion. Um, as it is an ongoing project, so I can only show you the first three stages of the instructional design. So the first stage, analysis. Um, we need to think of like, what do we have at the very beginning of the design? Um, so look at this, it's an Excel table. So um, in previous design, we have, a, we have a list of those plant informations. And when we look into the details, we will see um, we have a plant list, but we also have many sub lists. We have many pages for um, these informations. So here comes the questions like, we are going to solve the questions like how to connect those data among different shapes. And here we have lots of videos. Um, apparently we have put those video and archive it um, in OneDrive, but um, actually uh, students are required to create their own field trip videos and we will have more and more videos, but we, no, uh, but we also want to share these videos uh, with more audiences. So here comes another question, so like how to link video to the plant list. And this is the Facebook workplace. Um, in the past, the classroom did use the Facebook workplace for um, the majority communications and interactions. As you can see, we have different groups, we have different classrooms, and then they hear the student and teacher list. And then it, it's like the um, original, the, the Facebook group chats. So um, every user can post and interact with each other but um, we can communicate in this workplace, but it doesn't allow us to organize um, and archive data sets. And also we want to connect the plan list and video data. So based on the previous design, here comes another question, like what do we want to achieve? And I try to categorize um, what we need to do into three categories. Um, the first one is trying to link, um, link different databases, for example, how to enable um, collaborative plan lists and multi selections, how to connect information amount where it's plan lists, where it's a, a sheet, and then linked field trip videos to corresponding plant information. Another one is for collaborations, how to um, make sure students they can work on their own individual assignments and also they can share their work to their peer students, um, which enables student student interactions and also student teacher interactions and collaborations. And this year or in the future, um, we also want to create a shareable site with the public. In that case, uh, those uh, materials or those plant informations and field trip videos or the um, location of the plants, the habitats. We want to provide and share this information with the public. So next stage, how can we achieve the goals? Uh, I would like to say thank you to Gavin, uh, the lecturer in this project. Uh, he provided us a lot of the, these kind of manuscript to help visualize the ideas, to visualize the design idea. And I will not go through the detail with you. And here's the layout design for the shareable website. So as you can see, we have a very clear layout and um, um, how to present the plant database and how to present the video content. And based on these detailed information, I have drawn this um, flow chart. Um, so it presents the workload. Um, so look at this. Um, let's start from the top. Um, then you can see we have um, some, we will need some tools and some spaces for internal use, which will um, be between students and teachers in the classrooms. And then, oh, uh, and then after that, we need a public site to present um, the selected content. And then you can see the yellow, um, uh, the, the yellow content. They are the 
things that we will involve in the classroom. For example, a student workplace, even classrooms, uh, video database and species database, or the plant images, plant location, or the coordinates. And the black ones, they are the tools that we're going to use. For example, we will also have some pages for students to collaborate with each other and archive their work or to create their individual portfolio. And then we will use Google Map to show the locations. We will um, firstly upload the videos to YouTube and then we try to archive and organize the information to Notion. And then we will use Notion as a library hub to store these information and organize those data sets. And the pink sticky notes there, uh, it, it shows you how Tele can help in different stages. And then overall, uh, we will try to present um, all the selected contents um, to a website based on the Wix.com. And here we can try to use those uh, automation tools to help sync the data, or we can manually update each uh, month. Okay, so um, develop, um, develop digital content and help with Notion. Um, as you can see, this is one of the page that we try to sort out and organize those species or the plant information in Notion. Um, it is in the table view. So um, the differences between the Excel table and the Notion table um, list is like, uh, we have a list and we also have a sub page for each item. For example, when I click on it, it will jump out a sub page like this and we can add the properties. And this is one of the very useful property called multi-selections. So we can uh, differentiate different uh, category, the plant types and different informations. And then it will help us to do the multi-selections when we try to present the content um, on the wix.com. Uh, and it is another view and uh, it's called gallery. So if you still remember, like when I tried to introduce the Notion blocks, I, I mentioned that's a function called Notion database. So there are different views um, when we try to use the database function. So it is it's, it's another one called gallery. And when we, the same, when we click on the item, then we can see um, the images or the cover page and then the name, the Chinese name, plant type, video link and color. So we can also include and present the information in the gallery view. And here's another um, database. Um, we, it helps us to organize the video links, the video information. Okay, so um, previously I've mentioned like um, one of the things that we need to, one of the questions that we need to thought, so, uh, resolve is how to connect or link the information from different databases. For example, one is the video database, another is the species. How can we connect them? Um, I'm not going to show you very detail um, in today's sharing, but I would like to let you know just a few clicks that we can um, realize that to, like we can create the relations between the different um, information. For example, here we have a list of the, um, the, the video links of um, Morris Alba, the, the plant Morris Alba, and then we can find it out in the species database and just with a few click, we can try to link those database. So we don't have to jump through different pages, but with one click, then we can um, see the relations between different information. Um, is it detailed? So basically it's like once we uh, try to click on the item and it will show up something like this. It will show you like how we link the information from this source video database to another, info, another piece of information in the species database. So this is the root notion database, property and relation. Okay, so it is the screen, uh, screenshot of the website, the species subpages. So we have the menu bar, like we will uh, have the map, species, video and blog. 
So visitors, they can search information with the searching bar or also enable the advanced searching functions. And we also have two views for the visitor. We have a list of table and we also have the gallery one. It is the um, advanced search. So, so the visitor, they can select different items in each category and then they will see the um, target plans they're going to look for. And here's another page, just so the video one, the gallery view. So um, the visitor, they can also search for a plant, but see it in the gallery view, which will show up the, the um, video, the future video. Okay, let me summarize. Uh, first thing is like how Notion help. So we need to realize that digital tools can do a lot more than we think. For example, um, the majority will use Notion as a note-taking tool, it's for the individual use. But in this case, in this project, Notion, uh, Notion can enable team collaborations. It helps store and organize databases like the plan list, the video, coordinate, et cetera. And it can be for individual and team use. And then we need to realize two integration sometimes will help our work more effective for example, uh, we, we can uh, upload the video to YouTube and then we will have a video link and then we can try to organize those links uh, to the Notion pages and try to link it to the uh, plan list to the species database. Uh, here I have some tips for a different team collaboration. As you can see in this project, DLA, Tally and DLL, we work together and how we coordinate and how we communicate um, I think before we design and develop, we need to think a lot. For example, what we have so far and what we want to achieve, what kind of tools may help and how we can use tools to achieve the goals. And sometimes the why question will help us to evaluate our design and development as well. Okay, um, sorry that I'm not able to share the website, the digital algorithm website with you so far because uh, we're still developing the website but you're so welcome to follow the project Digital Burritum on social medias and stay tuned. We will keep you updated when the website is ready. And again, welcome to collaborate with Tally. Next, I will pass the time to my colleague, Marie. Thank you. So thanks for Cindy's sharing. So I'm Marie, now I'm going to share Open EdX, which is a self-paced learning models. So before I introduce Open EdX, I would like to introduce two concepts. They are learning management system and MOOC. For learning management systems, I think uh, most of you may hear about. This is a system for administration, documentations, tracking, reporting, automation, and delivery of educational courses, including training programs or learning and developing uh, programs. So there are lots of famous learning management systems, such as uh, Moodles, Canvas, Blackboard, Sekai, and Ding Ding in mainland China. And another concept is MOOC, which is Massive Open Online Courses. For this uh, open online courses platform, the user can find lots of courses they want to learn in uh, different areas. Some famous MOOCs such as Coursera, edX, Future Learnings, Canvas Networks, or uh, Chinese University MOOCs, they are famous. And so what about uh, open edX? Open edX is, uh, I would like to say, it's a combination of learning management systems and MOOC. It is uh, not just a platform that you can start your online learning design, or you can publish some uh, courses for the public, for the students and staff in the HKU. So um, there are some previous examples here. In the HKU's uh, Open Learning, Open edX. Actually, this is a very large platform for lots of course we already created here. So um, in the all courses here, you can find a lot of course that are created by different department or faculties. There are over uh, 67 courses in the HKU Open edX now. So some department like Common Core, uh, CDAS, 
uh, HKU library, they already designed a lot of interesting and useful courses here. And you can find them here. So some are open for all students and staff, but some are only for certain students. In here, I would like to divide all these course in uh, three types. They are courses, units, and TDG. So for courses, they have uh, the courses uh, numbers here. For example, the CBBA 9002 or CCHU 9001. These are the course that students, they have to learn in their Moodles, which means is if Moodle is their compulsory tools, they have to use it, then Open EdX is a platform that they can get uh, more other uh, knowledge here. For example, uh, for example, uh, if the students in the course they using they are using on the open edX here, they can find more information in the open edX. So the teacher, if they are using the open edX here, they can prepare their draft in here. And for the units, uh, units they don't have the course numbers but they can help you to uh, increase some individual skills, such as uh, manage citation with a note, uh, formally in writings. These are uh, very useful skills here. And also the TDG. Yeah, they can, you can see a lot of courses here. So after all this, what is the function of open ethics? Here, I would like to introduce the open ethics um, into two different uh, characters for learner and teachers. So if you are your learners, then open edX, you are an uh, external user of open edX. Then open edX is a MOOC platform for you. You can find a lot of uh, useful course here in the course contents here. But if you are a teacher, which you, uh, you are internal user of the open edX, then you can not only use the open edX to design your course here, but also this is a workshop for you. So here is another question. So now you already know that open edX uh, is also another learning management system here. So, but we also have Moodle. So you may want to ask why I still need open edX. Is Moodle not enough for me? Because Moodle is everyone need to use in the uh, in HKU. So why I still need open edX? Is open edX is necessary? So yes, we know nowadays is a post pandemic age. Everyone should know about online learning and everyone may hear about online learning, but not everyone is familiar with online learning. Not even mentioned to how to design the online learnings. So if you are a new beginner of the learning management systems, Moodle may be too complex for you. Yes, I have to say uh, Moodle is more comprehensiveness than open edX, but is that good for the new beginners of the learning management systems? Here I prepare uh, the comparative of both open edX and Moodles. So for the difference between the function of open edX and Moodles. I would like to say Moodle is a compulsory tools for every staff and student in HKU. As long as you are teaching staff or a student, you have to know how to use Moodles. And of course, the function are very complex and comprehensive. This. And it also have a lot of adding functions and all students, they have to finish their quiz, their exam, and their assignment on the Moodles. But for open edX, I think this is a complemented tools, and it's quickly and easy to learn. And also, uh, as the open edX is not compulsory for the students, they are more self motivations And for example, the student have to finish their study on Moodles, but for open edX, um, you can go in and learn something by yourself and as you like. And also for teachers who want to design their course in open edX, they can have a lot of creative contents and you can meet learners dynamic learning needs. For example, you just want to create a uh, workshop 
for your students to let them to have some uh, enhanced skills, then you can use open edX to create such course or trainings. But for Moodles, if you want to create a course on Moodle, you may need to ask for the uh, permissions for the technical skills uh, department's colleagues. But for open edX, it's an uh, open studio for you to draft your learning plans or start some small uh, small workshop. And here, I would like to say, uh, now if you're a student, uh, if you're a teacher and you want to start your course on Moodles, so when you want to create something new, what you are going to do? You want to like, uh, do you want to open the quiz or add, uh, upload some new files here? Then if you're in a Moodles, when you add an activity or resources, you can see a lot of icons here lot of new components here, like assignment, attendance, book and chat. And also you have a very uh, comprehensive navigation board here. And also you can see the, the chat box here. And yes, it seems this is a very comprehensiveness. You can basically, you can find everything needed on the Moodles, but that's all these function you needed Maybe some course that you just need very simple uh, function like quiz, assignments, attendance, and upload course or journal or lessons or discussion. That's all you need. But Moodle, it's provide a lot of advanced function here. So if you are an advanced learning management system users, Moodle will not uh, will more suitable for you. But what if you are a new beginner of learning management systems? then when you come into this page, you will, you maybe you are lost. You will uh, have no idea what should I begin with. But in the open ethics here, you can see when you want to add something new, this is the, you can see only a new unit or new subsection here. And when you click in, you can see there are very less things here. And the new components here, you can also only see the advanced discussion, HTML, problems, and videos here. And if I click in all these new components here, you can see in the advanced, you can see you can add some like survey, work clouds, or Google documents here. And in the HTML, you can add some uh, text, or raw HTML to design your page or design your course. And if you want to uh, publish some quiz or exam, here in the problem, the open ethics, you already list out the common problems types here, such as multiple choice. Yes, everyone should use in their course, uh, in their quiz. Uh, multiple choice, text input, chapels with hints and feedback, uh, blank common problems, or uh, if you want to have some advanced problems, Open Ethics have already list out something that are very useful icons here for you, like uh, blank advanced problems, drag and drop, image mapping import. So compare with the Open Ethics uh, new components function with Moodles, I would like to say Moodle is more functionalism. It's have a lot of functions for you if you are a uh, advanced learning management, system, uh, learning management system users. Moodle will more suitable for you. But if you're new beginners, open ethics is a uh, minimalism for you. You can start your learning management system in a very easy way. There's another thing, uh, another spotlight I will, uh, want to introduce in the open ethics is the online certifications. So as I mentioned, you can use some, uh, you can use open ethics to create some short term um, workshop or trainings. So after the participants finish this training or workshop, so how can I make sure if they finish or how can I make sure my teaching is qualified so that you can create your online courses certificates. And with this online course certificates, you can allow your participant get, get a professional authentications. And for this certificates, it's not only an e-version, but you can also print it out. 
And also, when you tailor made for the uh, e certificates, you can decide why, when they can get the certificates, how they can get, and uh, who will get it. This one. And if you need more support to how to create the e certificates, you can connect uh, Tally, and we will we would like to help you to guide you how to create an e certificate here. So let me wrap up the, uh, my introduce today's. So for open ethics, I think this is far more than uh, MOOC, but it also play a lot of function here. The first one is it's an introdu introduction of learning management systems. So if you want to begin your journey of online learnings, open ethics is a very useful tool to help you, with, help you to begin with. Another one is uh, teaching script. So we know you have to finish your course in the Moodle, but as I mentioned, Moodle it maybe is too complex for you. So you can use open ethics to draft your teaching script here, like uh, how many modules you want to create, uh, which quiz or which knowledge you want your student to have, you can make a script here. And also, uh, if you have a lot of teaching materials, I would suggest you to put in uh, open ethics because if you just put in your Google Drive or OneDrive or other place, uh, they may not be able to visualize for you because you need to, uh, the open ethics can help you to provide a more visualized teaching plans for you. And also the e-certificate. Open ethics can help you to create a short-term workshop. And compared with the compulsory course in the Moodle, open ethics can allow you to create some more creative course here. So the end of the my introduce today is I would like to say open ethics is not just a learning management system and book, but also your online teaching studio. So now I will pass my mic to Leon to finish today's introduction. Thank you. Yes, uh, thanks Naveen for the introduction. So the, sorry for the delay. So we just have a several more slides for so some promotion. Uh, conclusion. So again, uh, actually is uh, today's primary is about He's talking about this uh, idea scheme. So instructional design as an extension assistant, we want to help all the auditors to go develop content together. So if you are interested to work with us, so please uh, feel free to contact contact me or contact uh, other colleagues uh, on or all kinds of things. So of course, we can't help or if you want us to develop a, a, a complete new uh, LMS, that's something not possible, uh, but it, it aim to provide a uh, cost. Uh, we aim to work together to do develop something. So uh, assessments, uh, interact, <clears throat> virtual interactions, etc, etc. Uh, but uh, maybe if you want us to develop a, an app for you, then that will be something beyond the scope. Uh, but uh, for the rest, you can feel free to connect us, have, have some discussions first, and see how we can help. The second one is about Python. So uh, Nin mentioned, so actually we can ask, still, uh, we can create comics for DNL, we can even Ask students to create comments for assessments. So uh, Nin will have a workshop later on, uh, on May, mid May, and you can actually uh, try to join. Uh, you can join this workshop to learn how to use Python. So it's again free for, uh, free for uh, uh, students and teachers. Another thing, last thing is about a uh, a call for paper. So um, uh, I have another project for you thinking for you. So, and then we partner with uh, Polytechnic, uh, PolyU to run a conference, uh, a special chat. So uh, I believe some of you may be a, uh, have projects on VT, based on the VTL and you may want to showcase your results to others. So, uh, so that's why this special chat is uh, specialized for all of you. So if you want to show some of your results, some uh, results of your VTL projects, so feel free to know more about this special chat. Uh, this, uh, we will run this in a hybrid event on December in Polytechnic University. And uh, the first call for paper will be uh, mid June. And then we will have uh, several more call for paper also. So if you miss the first call for paper, you can wait for the second and third also. And uh, these, uh, these papers will be indexed by uh, Attribute Explore and also uh, Web of Science and uh, Corpus DIS. So I think it's uh, a good opportunity for for you to showcase your results.
So that's the end of today's discussion. So uh, that's the QA. So we, although we still, uh, we have already delayed, but uh, if you are interested, so uh, we can have a discussion later on and please help to fill in the evaluation form. Let us know uh, your uh, needs and also your, give us some advice on how should we design the five uh, minutes. So that's what I want to share. So yes, if you have any questions, so feel free to stay and we can have small discussions. So uh, can you also, so would a course create openness be open to the public? Uh, we have uh, uh, courses will be public for staff and students. Uh, if we want to create courses for the general public in Hong Kong or elsewhere, we have another uh, server, but that one would be a charge service. So uh, you can again uh, contact us. We can uh, uh, I can forward to corresponding colleagues and have, have more more discussions. But we have some projects that uh, run courses for the general public in, in Hong Kong. So yeah, that's the task service. So see if any colleagues have any other questions. Um, may I share something? Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, I just send out the uh, a database I call e-learning resource database. So this is a website open to public and we use it based on Notion. We design it based on Notion. And it is a website uh, initiated by Ellen Wong, um, a learning designer from the Faculty of Education. So we co-develop this site. And then you can see here we have the database. And here we have a list of the tools that we Hong Kong you license. And you can see some descriptions here. But if you go to like by categories, here we list out those tools uh, from A to Z. And then you click on the show all. Then we can see a bunch of e-learning online tools, e-learning digital tools. Maybe you can find some ideas or find some useful tools from this list. And you are so welcome to co uh, develop or co collaborate uh, collaborate with us on this site. And here you can see the subpage e-learning resource database. But if you go to the e-learning space, this is the first page of the whole thing. Then you can see the notes and you can contact Alan Wong as well. And here we have a Slack community. So feel free to join us if you are interested in contributing to this page and um, let's just develop this page. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So if there's no further questions, so that's the end of today's webinar. Thanks all. So stay safe and also enjoy the holiday. It's a long weekend. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.